service in the US is experimenting with a kind of combo hybrid, taking the physical and making it digital type of an experiment where they email the consumer every day pictures of the hard copy images of mail that is in their mailbox that day. And we've talked a little bit, and I'm interested in your perspectives on, you know, is this a good thing or a bad thing for the, the postal ecosystem? And, you know, from Angelica's standpoint, you know, what are we looking at in terms of response? If we get a better response to a physical piece than a digital, you know, are we going in the right direction? So, The tremendous concern that I have in working with marketers and people who are thinking about the emotional response to mail first and foremost and what it does for their business results is that if we promote products like that at the potential um, cost of the physical package, we sort of seed the advantage of the medium in ways that are compelling to marketers today. You know, for, for many years, the USPS has talked about the mail moment as sort of the compelling value of that interaction. And believe me when I tell you, and, and this is not to um, undermine the value of research, which is really, really valuable, but marketers understand sort of in their gut that mail delivers value because it is in somebody's hands and can provoke a response, an emotional reaction that's independent from that which they can see from an email or an online display ad or anything else for that matter. Um, does that mean that the investment that's associated with that package is required for all kinds of products and all marketing applications at all times? S certainly not. And, and many businesses will, will, will choose to shift resources appropriately. But when you think about high value verticals, for example, automotive, travel, certain financial services, certain retail, luxury, for example, where establishing an emotional connection as a means to get someone buying into the value proposition of an expensive product, having something physical there to do that is incredibly important. And when we talk about digitalizing that interaction, we essentially risk giving away that advantage to other medium and undermining the rest of the medium. It's not one size fits all. Uh, there could be specific products, advertising messages that uh, the media mix actually can provide uh, a lot of uh, valuable information. This is something actually that we're trying to capture with uh, a follow-up study that we're currently doing with uh, uh, OIG at USPS that um, how can, do we see if we have a media mix actually can help consumers get the better message about the products. And uh, seeing from what we observed on the first study where we saw that the digital advertisement actually can capture the attention much faster. But what creates a long-lasting impression, that emotional aspect that we observe it only uh, on products that are advertised in phys physical media. So we're trying to see if we combine the two. And the order that is presented to the consumer, does it play a role? Like showing, like quickly approaching the, the consumers by sending them an email and then following up with um, um, a postcard or a catalog or something that captured that physical, emotional reaction. Does it provide a better uh, way to communicate with, uh, with the consumer? And that is actually something that we're trying to capture. But I do believe also, and I will agree with Jonathan, that um, a combination of the two would provide a stronger, lasting effect. Yes, we have a couple questions down front. The earlier panelists, we were, were talking about how the last mile delivery of packages is like the future. Um, and I got to thinking, well, I don't necessarily see a place for the Postal Service in this future. Um, and now we're talking about advertising mail here possibly being the future. Uh, is there a way to combine them to say advertise on packages? And so that when you get your package, you have your advertising and you can do it all in one. <laughs> Sophisticated marketers will test everything. <laughs> we'll Have there been tests? In, in some limited cases, yes. Um, the, the, the question is, how addressable is it to them? What do they need to do to stand up a program like that? And what are the KPIs, the performance indicators that they can expect from that kind of initiative? You know, like I say, increasingly, the 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 orientation of the enterprise community, at least, is to be sort of channel blind when it comes to the options. Omnichannel means we're going to use everything, but we're going to look at it and manage 
all of those channels as one with the central focus on the customer and what we know about them. So um, it, from their perspective, it's, it's no different than assessing whether it's an outdoor advertisement or a mobile app or broadcast TV as part of their mix. Can it be tied to a specific application? Can they understand the costs and the potential benefits? And um, is it going to work? That's what's critically important. One more question, and I think we're going to have to go. Uh, Katie, if you don't mind, I'd like to ask your question again, bluntly, <laughs> and ask the panel, is, do you see any value in receiving an email right now of an image of a letter that's going to be in your front gate letterbox tomorrow? That was the question. That's what USPS is trial. Do you see any value in that? I can see value if it's a bill, if it's something of that nature, if it's a bill, um, if it's a marketing application, no, I don't see, I do not see the value in that if it's marketing. I do see the value if it's in operational things that you would take in as a household. As a consumer, essentially no, because for almost all um, of those applications, there are credible digital substitutes either via email or secure web connections that exist. Now, for certain segments of the population, those that are not as well conditioned either to using email for that purpose or getting to those sites, um, what you could be talking about in this case is, a, is a, a very credible bridge product of sorts, something to provide for that and ease that facilitation onto regular digital communications without essentially asking people to go all in on digital. Um, but I think, and, and this is relevant um, when you think about different segments of the population and how they respond to these products. When it comes to, to basic transactional communications, um, both with companies, with, with, with bill providers and the like, um, younger generations, and, and I, I mean up to roughly age 60, um, are generally well conditioned to um, uh, well conditioned to, to digital transactions at this point. And so, with the exception of those that are extremely, extremely sensitive with respect to privacy, and this is, I'm speaking in the U.S. context, very U.S. context, the answer here would be different elsewhere. Um, it, it, it'd be a very, very hard argument to make that that would become a, a trusted platform. Join me in welcoming or thanking our panel for their insights.